Hey, welcome to Vintage Land. I'm Alice. Uh, and let's get started. I've been gone for a couple months, even only after doing a few videos, but I think I'm really hard on myself with these videos. So I'm going to try to tone down the nerves a little bit and just kind of share some things with you. So um, just to bring you up to speed, some things that have happened in the last couple months. Um, I bought somebody's inventory, which was super cool. So I got that up and running. Um, it's a little bit of a slow start, but kind of to be expected. Um, we did hire an employee, which is kind of cool. Um, we are going to the longest yard sale ever this weekend and doing some camping. Not sure exactly where we're going to stay, but away from people as much as possible. What else happened? Oh, you saw I cleaned my house, but I destroyed it again. That's right. Auction started happening. Stuff started letting me buy stuff, and I kind of messed up. So I'm out of space again, and we're considering getting a storage shed in the back. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more that happened. I stayed so busy. Uh, but anyway, um, with the pandemic and everything and people getting the virus, uh, it's been kind of an emotional roller coaster. Um, and so anyway, so let's just get on with the day. Um, I think I'm going to start by kind of telling you about um, something else that happened, which is a mentorship. So I volunteered to be a mentor in a Facebook group, and I have talked to six people now. And out of those six, two people um, have showed pretty significant improvements in their store. So I thought I would share a little bit with you um, one of the questions that I got asked yesterday and um, see if it helps you in your business. So one of the questions is, what does my day look like? So um, as you know, most of you know that I do this part-time and my husband does it full-time. So we arranged a day um, on what would be the best to get most productive because um, there's only a few ways you make money out of this business and that's list and ship. Um, of course, you have to answer customer questions and all, but if things aren't listed, you don't make money. So that is like number one priority. Um, number two is getting it shipped to them because if they don't receive it, you get dings um, on your account and then eventually you become a bad account that no one wants to buy for them because they can't get their stuff. So this is what the day looks like. So we always start the day at the end. And what I mean by that is at the end of the day, we will um, prepare for the next day pick out however many items we want to list. Our target is 20 a day um, or 25. And we pick those items out. We make sure any kind of sticky is removed from them. Anything that needs to be cleaned is cleaned. Uh, any prep work that needs to be done is done. We may even go out and research the worth of the item um, just really quickly just to get an idea. Um, and that's kind of our kickoff for the next day. So when we get up the next day, the first thing we do is list those things that we already had. That way we know by the time the day ends, we've gotten some listings done. We usually do that through up until lunch. My husband does all those listings. He gets the photographs. He fills out all the stuff. And then at lunch, I'm usually taking lunch similar time that he takes lunch. So we, you know, have lunch if it's possible. Um, and then after lunch, he does all the packing and shipping um, for everything that's needed. And depending on how many shipments we have for that given day, it could take an hour. It could take the rest of the day. But we want to have it finished by 4.30 so we can make it to the post office by 5. So if by some chance, let's just say shipping takes two hours, usually around 3 o'clock, he's done with the shipping. He will go drop it off. And then he comes back and he starts doing the remainder of the listings. That way, by the time I get off work around five-ish, um, I can join him with helping finish the last of the listings, and I do the final review just because it's nice to have two sets of eyes on something, and then we pick out the stuff for the next day. So my time included in the business is probably maybe two hours a day with him, Sometimes if I'm really eager and wanting to get more done, it might run into later on the night. Um, sometimes I get a little excited and go all the way till midnight. But usually I try to finish that work around 8 o'clock. Um, 
and then of course that's not counting the shopping that we do on the weekend and then sometimes we get you know in the evening we'll go buy you know maybe a goodwill or something so that kind of lays out my day now in between that he might have to stop and answer messages at night i send offers to people um, if we have returns, we'll go ahead and process that to get the labels back for the returns. Very easy, just a few clicks in the system. There's a thing called cross-list that we use to cross-list the other, um, other platforms like Macari, Poshmark, Etsy. Um, so we'll do that. That's just a few clicks of the button. So those things I can do in the evening while he's finishing up some of the stuff. Um, but that kind of entails our day. But the main thing we make sure we're done with every single day is we have the next day's listings picked out. And that way, the next day, we can concentrate on that work. And if it happens to be a low shipment work, maybe his day is even shorter than that. And then when I get off, we'll pick another. And then in some cases, he's already picked um, the amount out for the next day. Um that needs to be listed and then there's not really a lot for me to do but shop when I get off work which is the fun part about the business so um, now I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a slideshow to show you some of the highlights of things that I've sold in the last couple months um, some of the interesting things um, the wow factors um, where it shows what I bought something as and what I sold it for and um, just like kind of some cool stuff. So let's get to that. This is a thimble. And as you can see here, it's got like a little um, carousel around it and some horses. And it actually spins and turns. I got that at an estate sale for $4 with 25% off that. So three something. And I sold it for $26. So don't overlook your thimbles, people. They can um, bring a little bit of money to your pocket. All right. Now, this little bugger, bugger, bug, I said bug. Okay. So, this bunny bunny I sold for $58.50, and I really couldn't tell you what I paid for it. It's probably in some auction lot. Maybe I have $2 into it. I even had a broken foot, but I was very hard pressed to give this up. I just think it is the cutest, creepiest thing I've ever seen. So anyway, it's an Anco bunny rabbit. It had jointed legs and uh, it was just very unique. So that's one of my prized selling in the last couple months, but also something I didn't want to give up. Okay, if we talk about this find right here, so I actually got this from an antique booth. Um, a man was trying to get rid of a lot of his stuff for extremely cheap. I think he had 75% off of everything in the booth. And then when I went and looked, this book was marked for $98. And even with 75% off, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, and he ended up selling it to me for $5. And this one in another book. So I sold it for $48. Um, so it's a coffee table book for Ferrari. So Apple Macintosh Mac Plus 1 megabyte computer. Need I say more? Got to pretend. Sold it for $33. Okay, so this item here, I feel like I'm showing you everything of things I didn't want to give up. Um, but I can't keep everything. Uh, this was a um, Coro bracelet actually, excuse me, Coro necklace, a choker necklace, um, 16 inches long, and it was so pretty. That is real wood. It was a little acorn necklace, um, gold tone, um, found it at an estate sale with some costume jewelry, and I'm not sure what I paid for it. I don't know, 4 or $5, but I just loved it. It was a very unique piece, and it got five bids and sold for $43.50. Now, this item here is actually an old telephone repair book. Um, it was for the old-timey phones to restore and repair telephones. So I thought it was very interesting, especially for those that are um, smart enough <laughs> to be able to find these older phones and um, maybe fix them up and resell them to people that want some of these antique and vintage items. 
So um, I want to say that I got it, I don't know, in some book lot. Maybe I paid 4 or $5 for it, and I sold it for $32. So I couldn't go through all this without talking about jelly shoes. I would have definitely kept these for myself if it wouldn't have been for the fact that they were a little too small. But for those of you that know jelly shoes, they are wonderful. And rarely do you find any that are still together and that can still be used or collected if want, people want to collect them. Uh, so I bought these from Goodwill, probably $5. And I just could not seem to get my feet to fit into them, so I sold them. Okay, so this one right here was just impressive to me. So I'm not the big railroad person, but there are collectors that are railroad people. And my husband got this, and he turned around and sold it for $90. And this thing is like this big, and it came, it's a railroad metal sign. It was very small and a very effective apparently so don't pass up your railroad stuff um, people do collect it okay so we're coming to the end of our items that I wanted to highlight for you this is a flavor wave oven deluxe dome cover replacement part so I had this flavor wave oven and I decided I wanted to try parting it out because I don't do a lot of parting out. And it sold fairly quickly for, um, I believe, $39. And the last highlight I'm going to show you here is a rare Casablanca modern table fan. Beautiful fan. It oscillates, works, uh, has a retro feel. Does, they don't make these anymore. And uh, this actually, I got a couple bids on it and sold it for $150.50. And um, we got it at a um, auction with some other older fans. Um, and I think we paid maybe $40 or $50 for that um, table of fans. So um, that kind of highlights all the things that um, have sold recently in the last few months. Actually, I left off two. So hold on, hold on, there's two more to show you. This encore from your applauding. I'm back. Okay, so this item here is um, a vintage Smith Corona Galaxy 7, 12, 7, 12. That is 12. It's a Galaxy 12 manual typewriter with case. Very beautiful. And uh, we actually, someone bought it for a movie production. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of movie, but she might send me a link to it. Um, but she's doing a Dick Tracy type of film. And so it is on its way there and should be delivered today. So I'm super excited. I enjoy probably second to buying vintage good. I enjoy talking to people that love vintage goods and what they're doing with them. And are they resellers? Do they fix things up? And, um, you meet just a whole bunch of people. You meet people that... Um, just co are collectors. You meet people that refurbish things. Um, people that do movies, apparently. Um, so that's really um, awesome. Sorry, I thought somebody was pulling up in the house. Okay, I had to highlight this one for you. So this is a 1980-something Heinz ketchup bottle, and I sold it for $8. So, um, know your goods. I mean, don't overlook anything. Uh, it's sold. I got it basically for free. And um, anyway, it's a pretty cool looking piece. Uh, hopefully it'll go with someone's Heinz collection. Okay, so that is it for today. I'm glad you joined me and I will try to do the videos weekly. Oh, and one thing, I am going to the longest yard sale in the world, even though I don't know that that's been scientifically proven. But anyway, it's um, Highway 127 that goes from Alabama to Michigan. Um, I won't be able to make it that far, obviously, but we're going to do a little bit of camping and we're going to hit some of those. So I think I'm going to do a few of those videos and see what it's like for you to come shopping with me. Anyway, hold on for that. Um, bye. Have a good weekend.